Okay, in this video we're going to look at a couple of vector forms of Green's theorem. So but before we do that, I just want to recall the statement um, in kind of a non-vector form. So let's suppose that we have a piecewise, smooth, simple, closed curve, which we'll call C, also positively oriented, which I didn't write here, but that's another necessity, and it's bounding a region D. And that's the same thing as saying that the boundary of D equals C or del D equals C, that's some notation for that. And then next, we've got two multivariable functions, P and Q, and they have first partials on an open set that contains D. So I've just put on D here, but you want to read that as an open set containing D. Next, we have this line integral over C of PDX plus QDY is the same thing as this double integral over the region D of partial Q partial X minus partial P partial Y DA. And so we're going to look at two vector forms of this and later we'll hint at the fact that these are really coming from some sort of um, bigger theorem that's happening in terms of uh, vector fields of arbitrary dimension which we're actually going to see uh, later after we cover everything in R2 and R3 so I'm pretty excited about doing that later. Okay but before we get to it we need to define some operations and so first of all we have this uh, gradient operation which we've seen before and I want to write it in two different ways. So, uh, so mostly it's given by this triangle on F. So that's going to be a vector made up of uh, the X derivative, the Y derivative, and the Z der derivative. Or since we're just dealing in uh, two-dimensional vector fields here, this is really just the gradient of the X derivative and the Y derivative. Sometimes this is written uh, with uh, letters, so it's written as uh, gradient f. And then another thing that I want to notice is that this is some sort of operator which takes a function of uh, n variables and it turns it into a vector field on Rn. So let's maybe write that down. So this thing right here, so uh, this is some sort of function itself which takes a multivariable scalar functions and sends them to vector fields on and here we'll say Rn where that's the number of dimensions. Notice for Green's theorem we're just going to have two dimensions. Okay, gradient. That's one thing that we need to look at. Uh, the next thing uh, is maybe something called the curl. And there is a notion of a curl in n dimensions, but we'll first look at the curl in two and three dimensions. So the curl in two dimensions is uh, given by the following. So the curl of this thing right here is uh, given by dq dy minus dp dx. So it's a scalar function which is given by that uh, combination of partials of q and partials of p. Notice that's exactly what's showing up here in uh, this Green's theorem, so that's maybe important to notice. And notice that the curl in two dimensions can be seen in the following way. So curl takes, uh, so it takes as an input a vector field in R2, and as the output, it gives us a scalar function um, with two variables. Great. So uh, the next thing we want to look at is the curl in R3, and the curl in R3 is given by the following thing. So we'll have curl of um, P, Q, R. So that's actually most easily described by a determinant of a matrix. So it's the determinant of this matrix I, J, K, and then here we have the partials with respect to X, the partial with respect to Y, the partial with respect to Z, and then uh, P, Q, R. Great. So now uh, notice that that's going to give us the following vector field. So in the I direction, we're going to get um, R sub Y minus Q sub Z, if we do the determinant of the uh, cofactor. 
and then in the J direction, so that's going to be like crossing this guy out and crossing that guy out, we're going to get uh, PZ minus RX because there's a built-in minus sign. And then in the K direction, we're going to get uh, QX minus PY. So notice in the K direction, we're kind of getting the same thing as the curl up here. So notice um, in three dimensions, the, the curl um, does the following. It takes uh, vector fields in R3 and takes them back to vector fields in R3. So that's like an important distinguishing property from the curl in R2. And I should say that this curl in R3 is often written in the following way. So we could write this guy right here as the vector field F and we would write instead of curl F, which is a pretty common way to write it, we could also write del cross F, where we read del as this vector which is made up of uh, partial derivative operators, so partial X, partial Y, and partial Z. Okay, so I'll erase the board and then we have one more operator to define uh, before we're ready to look at these vector forms. Okay, so the last operator we want to look at is called the divergence. And that uh, takes in a vector field and always gives you a scalar function. And it is written in the following way. So divergence of a vector field F is going to be equal to uh, the partial derivative of the first component, which I'll call F1, with respect to X1, plus all the way up to the partial derivative of the nth component with respect to Xn. So it is that sum, where I should say that F vector is equal to uh, this vector field with component functions F1 through Fn. So uh, notice that if we have the divergence of the vector field P Q, that's going to be exactly dp dx plus partial q partial y. Okay. And then often uh, we would write the divergence of f as del dot f, where again that del is uh, that operator from before with all the partial derivatives. Okay, so let's give an example finding a curl and a divergence. So let's say we've got this vector field f, x, y, and let's say it's uh, x squared, y, and then maybe uh, x, z, and then maybe z cubed. So let's say that's what we've got. And now uh, let's find the curl of f. So I'll use this del cross f notation because that's kind of what I like. And notice that is going to be the determinant of this three by three matrix. And I use the word determinant and matrix kind of loosely. Notice all the rows are made up of objects of different type. Here we've got vectors. In the next row, we're going to have these derivative operators. And then in the last row, we're going to have um, polynomials in this case, but generally functions. Uh, so this is a very loose definition of determinant. Okay, so now uh, we need to do cofactor expansion. So the first component will be given by what we get from crossing the first row and the first column out and taking that determinant. So notice we've got the partial with respect to y of z cubed, so that's gonna give us zero, minus the partial with respect to z of xz, so that's gonna give us x, great. And then the next component, so that'll be crossing out the second column in the first row, and then doing the partial with respect to x of z cubed, so that's zero, minus the partial with respect to z of x squared y, so that gives us zero as well. So the final answer is zero, but we would have had to negate whatever the final answer is because that's built into the definition of the determinant. So we've got a zero for that. And then finally, the third column in the first row. So that'll be the partial with respect to x of xz. So that's going to be z minus the partial with respect to y of x squared y. So that's going to be x squared. So we have z minus y squared. So that is this uh, del cross f, or in other words, that is the curl of f.
Okay, great. I'll clean this up and then we'll look at an example of the divergence. Okay, we just calculated the curl of this thing. Now let's go ahead and calculate the divergence of this thing. So again, I'll use this uh, del dot f notation, which means we're gonna take this operator, which is given by the partial with respect to x, the partial with respect to y, and the partial with respect to z, and dot it into this vector field, which has component functions x squared y, x, z, and z cubed. Great. So, now notice, in order to do the dot product, it's not really the dot product because we're not multiplying, it's some sort of operator situation, but we're like loosely using the term dot product. So we need to take the partial with respect to x of this guy. So notice that's gonna be two x y. Then we need to take the partial with respect to y of that guy. So that's gonna be zero because there's no y's over there. Then finally we need to take the partial with respect to z of z cubed, so that's going to be 3z squared. So notice we get a scalar function for that. The divergence of f is equal to this 2xy plus 3z squared, and then just to use this other notation, that is a divergence of f like that. Okay, so we've done some examples of divergence of curl, so hopefully uh, that gives you a feel for how they go. And now we're gonna write down a couple of vector forms of Green's theorem, um, and then we'll be done. Okay, so we defined the divergence and curl, and now we're ready to look at Green's theorem, vector form one, and really vector form 1.1 as well, because we'll kind of look at these uh, together. So the first thing that I want to do is consider this uh, vector field fxy, which is p comma q, like that. And now notice that just as we had before, the curl of f, which in two dimensions we should really write it like that because this cross product in two dimensions is not really particularly well defined. So the curl of f as we had defined is going to be dq uh, dx minus partial p partial y. But that actually immediately allows us to rewrite uh, Green's theorem. So notice, I'm going to take this uh, version of Green's theorem and then just copy it over here. So here we have PDX plus QDY equals uh, the double integral over D of partial Q partial X minus partial P partial Y. Fantastic, but notice that uh, this side is exactly equal to uh, p comma q dot this dx dy, right? Which um, is furthermore the same thing as f dot um, with uh, x prime comma y prime dt, where uh, x prime is equal to dx dt and y prime is equal to dy dt. Um, and uh, maybe some r parameterizes this curve. Okay, so in other words, this is the line integral over the vector field, which we generally call in the form uh, p uh, dot dr. So here we're doing a line integral over a vector field. And then, well, there's not so much to do over here. Notice that this is exactly the curl of F. So we can write that down here, and we get the double integral of the curl of F, dA, is going to be the same thing as the line integral over the vector field of F dot dr. So there we go. That's uh, maybe version 1 of our... Um, Green's theorem in vector form. Now I'll clean up the board and we'll do kind of version one and a half, um, really version 1.1 1 .1, um, before moving on to version two. Now we're ready to look at a very, very similar form of Green's theorem, uh, which all is almost exactly like the other one. We're just going to push it up one dimension, but it's a really trivial way of pushing it up one dimension. So we're going to consider the vector field, um, which only depends on x and y, and so um, it does not depend on z, uh, which is given by p comma q comma zero. So that's a vector field that's totally living within the xy plane, um, even though we're considering it in a larger three space. Great, and then um, in this case, you can check that the curl of this vector field, 
And I won't work out the details, but you can look at it from the definition that we had before. This is going to be exactly uh, 0, 0, 0, partial Q, partial X, minus partial P, partial Y. So that's always what we had in this third component. And then if you look on some previous boards earlier in the video, we have zeros in these components because uh, PZ and QZ are both equal to zero, given that this only depends on X, y, X and Y. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write this as uh, partial Q, partial X, minus partial P, partial Y in the K direction like that. And now we can essentially do the same thing that we had um, before. We can write this left-hand side of uh, our scalar version of Green's theorem as the line integral over the curve of F dot dr. And then we can write this right version as the double integral of the curl, but I'm going to write it in this uh, del cross f version. So that gives us a vector, but now we're going to go ahead and dot that vector with k um, and then do da. And let's see why that works. Notice if we dot this thing with k, we've got um, a scalar function, which is this thing right here. Uh, and then k dot k, but k dot k is obviously zero. So there's our 1.1 version of uh, Green's theorem in vector form. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at another version of Green's theorem in vector form. Okay, so here's another version of Green's theorem in vector form, and this is actually not going to so this is actually going to use this result, but it's not going to look exactly the same, but we'll see how it works. So we're going to have the same kind of setup. So we've got our vector field F, um, which is of X and Y, and here we're just considering this in two dimensions, so kind of like we did uh, initially. Okay, now the next thing that we want to do is let's say that R of T is equal to X of T comma Y of T, and that is like parametrizing our curve. So maybe I'll put over here, this is uh, parametrizing our curve C. Okay, great. And now uh, another thing that we want to do is calculate the following, and we'll see why we need this calculation in just a little bit, um, but we're going to calculate the vector, this unit tangent vector. So this unit tangent vector is given by um, r prime divided by the magnitude of r prime. So way back in the beginning of the course, we had this like unit tangent vector and all of these other kind of things. So uh, just recall that this was the definition of the unit tangent vector. Okay, so now if we break this down into components, we're going to have x prime over magnitude of r prime in the i direction plus y prime over magnitude of r prime in the j direction. Great. Now what we want to do is construct a unit vector which is normal to this tangent vector. And that's actually pretty easy to do just by inspection. So um, I'll notice that this will work. So we can have uh, y prime over magnitude of r prime in the i direction minus x prime over magnitude of r prime in the j direction. Okay, so you can easily check that this is a unit vector. So maybe let's go ahead and do that real quick. So notice that if we have n dot n, that's going to give us um, y prime squared plus x prime squared over magnitude of r prime squared. But notice that numerator is already just the magnitude of r prime squared. So in other words, uh, n dot n is equal to 1, which makes n a unit vector. The next thing that we can do is very, very easily check that these two are orthogonal to each other, making n actually a normal vector as needed. So let's do uh, vector t dot vector n. And let's uh, notice that we'll get... Um, x prime y prime, so x prime y prime um, over magnitude of r prime minus x prime y prime over magnitude of r prime. And so that's like very, very clearly zero as well. So notice we get this 
unit tangent vector is orthogonal to this uh, vector n. In other words, n is a unit normal vector. So let's go ahead and put that here, unit normal vector. Okay, so now I'm gonna clean up the board and we're gonna see um, where this is going. Okay, so now that we've got our setup, recall that we've got this unit normal vector to our curve. We're ready to write down this second vector form of Green's theorem. And I want to point out that we're not going to start on the left-hand side with an object like this, but we will use this scalar form in our calculation. So the object that we want to start out on the left-hand side is a line integral still. So it'll be the line integral over C of F dotted with this normal vector in ds. Great, so notice that is a line integral with respect to arc length. And so that's what makes this kind of an interesting variant on Green's theorem is it has to do with line integrals with respect to arc length, which we seem to have forgotten about for a little bit, but now they're back. Okay, so notice we've got a vector field here dotted with um, a vector here, and so this is going to give us a scalar function. Now we want to recall the definition of a line integral with respect to arc length and that's going to allow us to write this as the integral from A to B where A and B are the endpoints that parameterize C so I won't write that down but just keep that in mind that's what this little a and this little b are and then um, what we'll have is f dot n where we have composed the function r inside of f but I've kind of not written that because it's going to get too wordy uh, we'll have that calculation written out in just a second and then this ds is going to turn into the following so that's going to turn into the magnitude of r prime uh, dt so just recall that that's what you get okay so now what I want to point out is that f here, it's really P comma Q, but P is being evaluated at R of T and Q is also being evaluated at R of T. So see, it gets wordy if I write it out like that, but that's what's going on. So everything in here is a function of T. Okay, so now if we go ahead and dot this F with this N, which notice if we write this N in the other form, it is going to be a Y prime magnitude of R prime comma minus X prime over magnitude of R prime. So that allows us to maybe take the dot product of F with uh, N a little bit easier. So notice F and N, F is that and N is that. So that's going to give us uh, the following. So we've got the, the integral from A to B of, so we have P times Y prime over the magnitude of R prime. So that's this component times this component minus Q times X prime over the magnitude of R prime. And then all of this is multiplied by the magnitude of R prime dt. But now notice that this magnitude of R prime cancels in all of the spots. And then we recall, like before, that dy is equal to y prime dt. In other words, dy is dy dt dt. And dx is equal to x prime dt. So we can turn this back into a line integral in the following way. So this is going to be the line integral over c of, so now this is going to be p dy minus q dx. Okay, good. So since we're running out of room, I'm actually going to erase the board and bring this up here, and then uh, we're almost done. Okay, so let's see where we are. We've got this line integral with respect to arc length of f dot n. We worked that down to the line integral of p dy minus q dx. So maybe in order to see what's going on really, really carefully, I'm going to color code this. So I'll call this yellow p and uh, yellow q. And notice our Green's theorem here says that we should have the partial derivative of yellow Q over uh, with respect to X, and then the partial derivative of yellow P with respect to Y. And then over here, our translation is the following. So white P is going to be equal to a yellow Q, 
right? Because that's the thing in front of dy in both. And then um, white Q is going to be equal to negative yellow P. Okay, good. So now if we uh, go ahead and insert that into our uh, scalar version of Green's theorem, we get the double integral over D of, so it's going to be D yellow Q DX. So notice that's going to be partial P with, res with respect to X when we translate, minus the derivative of yellow P with respect to Y, but those minuses are going to cancel and we're going to get the partial of Q with respect to Y. And now we have DA. But we've got a name for a thing like that, and it's the divergence. So this is the double integral over D of the divergence of F dA. And you know, sometimes we call this divergence uh, del dot F. Okay, so now if we read the extreme left-hand side and right-hand side, that gives us our second uh, vector form for Green's theorem. Okay, so this is a good place to stop.